We're set for a great show tonight here on League Life. Welcome to Lara Pitt, Jess Yates, Hannah Hollis and our very special guest, motivational speaker, international inspiration and a hardcore rugby league lover to boot, John Curtis. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Hello, girls. Hi. Hi. It is a pleasure to be here. Let me tell you, thank you so much. We're thrilled to be able to speak with you. You've spent the last 30 years motivating rugby league players and coaches, challenging them to approach life and the game very, very differently. But let's go back. Who planted the seed of rugby league for you? Who became your hero? Who motivates you? Well, I grew up in a little country town. It was out, out at North Richmond, which is out near Penrith. And there were dairy farms everywhere. And the community out there, we had rugby league was a stronghold. And my dad coached my two brothers and my sister also played when she was a youngster. Back then, the girls could play with the boys until they got to a certain age. So I, I got the passion of my rugby league uh, from my dad, most assuredly. You know, it's, uh, it's worn through uh, on me pretty thick. Can you take us back? And tell us a little bit about your journey growing up with a disability and some of those defining moments for you um, that have made you the man today and, and what it is that led you to become a motivational speaker and really inspire well, uh, people all over the world. I, I'm glad you spoke about my disability. I just called him my big brother. Um, but, no, look, it is true, I do. I've, I've actually got no legs. There we go. And I've been very fortunate, Jess, that I'm able to do what I do. In the year that I grew up, you know, a lot of disabled kids were put in homes or or even terminated at birth, because a lot of parents didn't want them back in those days, where my mum and dad said, no way, we're going to take him home, we're going to give him a life, which is what they did. So, and, and they raised myself, my two brothers and my sister with lots of love and also lots of discipline and put us on the right track to be able to do what we do. Um, I didn't start school until about fifth grade, but when I finished school, I, I wanted to get involved in a bit more sport and things like that. Uh, I worked in a hardware shop, it was my very first job, in the local hardware with Mr Dawson. You see, I unpack his shells with paint cans that were bigger than me. And I used to have to put the handle in my mouth, climb up a ladder while hanging onto this paint can by my mouth and then work out how to get it up on the shelf, then go and serve customers and stuff like that. So, and that's when I realised it's time to work smarter and not harder. <laughs> but yeah. it, it must be stories like that that you used to motivate? I mean, what are the, the stories, the journey, through the journey that you've been on that really has an impact when you speak to these corporations and these individuals and from people from all walks of life? Well, LP, I, the way that I look at it is that it, it's my life, mm. you know, and I don't see it as being any different to how you live your life, mm. but it's how people view me. You know, and it's not just me now. We've got Dylan Alcott, the Wimbledon champion, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and a whole variety of others. We've got Mads as well, the mm -hmm. Paralympian, the wheelchair athlete, Kurt Fairley, of course, mm -hmm. the legend that he is. And it's about educating and the way that people see us. Yep. So it's not so much how we see ourselves, because to me, it's just everyday life. And that's the way that I was raised. My dad said to me from a young age is that, you know, you're in this world and this world isn't going to cater for you, so you have to cater for it, mm -hmm. you know. And then and that's how they raised us all. And that's exactly how we had to do it. You know, they never put any light switches down lower. They, they built a two-storey house and had lots of stairs. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dad. Yeah, beauty. <laughs> Appreciate that. But, you know, it's... Um, and it, it just made me cope, you mm -hmm. know. And if they didn't do that, would I have the independence that I have today? Mm. John, you're asked by corporations, big individuals to come and speak. But when you do your work with rugby league clubs, when they invite you to come and talk, what, what's one of the main things they want you to address? Well, you know, I think for me... The one thing that I want to get across to these guys that, that play our sport is how lucky they have it, how honoured they should be feeling to run out on that ground every week, week in, week out, with 12 of their best mates and they've got some guys sitting on the bench waiting to come on as well. You know, how lucky and fortunate they are that they're able to do that because there's a lot of other people that would love to do it mm. but don't have that opportunity, mm. you know, and, and it's all about being the best that they can be. Mm. You know, if I may use you guys as an example, is that LP doesn't wear your shoes. Mm. You don't wear Vonnie's shoes. Vonnie doesn't wear Jess's shoes. You all wear your own shoes. We'd all love to wear Jess's shoes. She'd be yeah. Yeah. the best way. I actually shoes. noticed that. Know. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, my wife's a shoe fiend too, mate. I can't work it out. There's one pair of legs in our house and about 400 pairs of shoes. A girl How needs does that options, work? John. Oh, really? Needs options. But, you know, the point I'm making here is that these are mine. Mm. Yeah. You know, these are my shoes right here. And the most important thing for me to do with these shoes every day is to fill them the best way that I can. And that's what you guys got to do with your shoes, no matter how good looking your shoes might be. <laughs> but you be the best that you can be. 
Mm. You know, then uh, that's what I want these boys to do when I go out on that field, to be the best player that they can be, to worry about the job that they have to do. Mm. Same as in these corporations. You know, they struggle to sometimes to build that team culture in these corporations mm. and, and they don't have that. And we've got to draw them and pull them all in together mm. and get on and do the job. Mm. They said, we've just got to fill our own shoes, do that 100% job, be that best version of ourselves. When you're doing your work with these rugby league players, what, what are some of the challenges or the weaknesses that, that they identify that they want to talk to you about? Well, some of the challenges that I have with them, they're football players, you've got to speak a lot slower to them <laughs> to start with. Uh, Mark Guy's a perfect example of that, right? So, but look, they, they identify with me at some of the hardships that I've been through and they can look at themselves and think, well, really, we don't have it that bad. You know, they, some of them have beautiful families already. You know, some of them, have, you know, aspiring to be going where the green and gold. You know, I mean, look at the guys, look at Jackie White and had a great state of origin, you know, campaign this year. And I tipped him to be in the side, you know, before it was even named. And he's, he's come on really leaps and bounds, mm. you know. And I just want them to know that the sky's the limit for those guys. No, it really is. And same with you guys, the sky's the limit for you guys. We can be anything we want to be. And I mean, we get told that all the time, but I'm a living example of that. You know, like I go scuba diving and, and I, I love playing all different sports and I love playing tricks on people. I think that's just <laughs> one of the greatest things that we can possibly ever do. What do you do? Yeah, you, there was one time they were in a shopping centre and I hide behind all the toilet paper and I wait for people to come along and jump off the shelf and knock all the toilet paper everywhere. Oh, wow, wicked. Oh, it's a perfect spot to do it because they poo themselves, you know, so. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you have the best sense of humour of any guests we've ever had yeah. on this oh, show. Oh, I'd love to be a stand-up comedian, but I can't stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know earlier this year you went up to see the Newcastle Knights. Yeah, uh, and yeah well, they, they, they came went up. on a, a six run winning streak after Woo! off the back of you. you what did I do to them? You were, <laughs> what, will you tell yeah, us? Give us some insight question. into what that was like and what you did do for them. Well, there, there was a couple of players there that I already knew from, from past teams, you know, like uh, Junior Pierce and, and those guys, and then getting to meet the new guys came, coming through, like KP and all that. And again, just emphasising with them. That they, they got a job to do. Each one of those guys has an individual job to do and then they come together as that team. You know, it doesn't matter. All the pressure gets put on these coaches. I mean, look what's just happened now with the Titans, right? All the pressure gets put on these coaches for their teams to do well. But the coach doesn't run out on the field. Mm. The coach can't make them do the best they can. They've got to want to do the best they can. And that's where I step in to show them that this is what we need to do so we can get the best out of you, so you can get the best out of you. And it's all having about the right mindset and the right frame of mind mm. you know, to be able to do that. Well, John, thank you so much for everything that you've done. You continue to inspire and educate our community. You're an absolute gem, so please come back and visit us again. Oh, I would love to. Any time you guys will have me here, I would love to come and <laughs> sit down here with you guys because you all make me look good, let me tell you. So <laughs> it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. And, you know, it's about time I came here. Maddie tried to get me onto his show many, many times, and, and I found out why, because he only wanted someone there that was shorter than him. <laughs> so... <laughs> I hope, I hope you, you watch that one, John. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. John Curtis, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you, girls. Thank you so much. All right, time for a quick break here on League Life.